Okay, yes, welcome to Stacademia once again. So uh, my name is Bran Madena, and today I'm going to talk about uh, proofreading your work before submitting it. And uh, the things that you're supposed to look uh, uh, while you're proofreading your work. Now, one thing I'll tell you is that uh, once you've submitted work, no, once you've finished writing your work, and uh, you're okay that you are, you are you didn't go off topic. Uh, everything is okay. The citation is just okay. The formatting is okay, and everything. The last thing for you to do before submit it is uh, proofreading it. And proofreading it, proofreading your work will basically give you another perspective, or rather another view on how you are going to see those mistakes, errors, or everything. And uh, people usually think of this as a very uh, difficult thing to do, but uh, trust me. Uh, it is not difficult because right now we have, uh, you can read your work even using computers like uh, Adobe Acrobat and so forth. And so it's not hectic. You can just listen to how you are flowing with your ideas and everything. And uh, once you're satisfied with it, you can submit it. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I really want you guys to be proofreading your work so that you can minimize errors and uh, chances of uh, uh, work being returned for revisions. So uh, I will first, before I just continue, I'll just, I just just want to highlight some few things. I'll take a blackboard and uh, we discuss some few things. Now, the, the things that I want us to discuss, number one, is uh, sentences, clarity, okay? I'll just talk about uh, clarity here. Clarity, okay? Clarity, uh, I've, I've seen guys can write sentences that can be interpreted in two ways, okay? Like Uneza, you can write something and then uh, the reader interprets, interprets it differently from the way you intended, okay? So please be certain that any sentences or statements that you make inside your writing article are, 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 are fixed in such a way that nobody can interpret them in, in, in whatever way, okay? Yeah, so that is the first thing. So number two, as I said, Use uh, short sentences. You'll see why. Uh, if you proofread, you, you you can get this challenge of reading very long sentences. Even computers get challenges of reading very long sentences. You realize that here, I really have to either uh, divide this one, these sentences to two, or do something, okay? Or add some punctuation or something like that. Number three, while you're proofreading, uh, be keen particularly in mistakes or errors uh, that Grammarly does not see or rather grammarly avoids okay because usually proofreading is the last thing to do uh, after you've checked the work from grammarly you will eventually see some errors okay you'll eventually see some errors that grammarly neglected and then after you've proofread and maybe got some errors and changed always check your work against grammarly again that is the thing okay so grammarly check your work against grammarly another time so that you make sure that uh your grammarly percentage is uh, 95 and above. Okay, so it should be uh, greater than 95. Yeah, something of that kind. So that is the thing. That is how I proofread. Now, uh, in the previous video, I showed, I showed you how to proofread using Adobe Acrobat. And uh, right now, I'm still going to show you uh, the very same example. But now I'm going to show you with a different... Uh, uh, order like this journal assignment for sorry about that sorry about that so uh as you can see uh yeah one thing i'll tell you when you're proofreading your work uh format your work in APA according to APA and uh that is the only way now we have changes in standards. Like initially we say that here we are supposed to have three, but now we are having four, okay? Four spaces. Okay, that one, the changes in standards of the app that I'll tell you later. But uh, for now, uh, uh, this is the work that we want to proofread and uh, to see if there are any errors anywhere. So for me, I can just come here to file, I come here to save us. And I come to desktop. <clears throat> and uh, when I come to desktop, journal assignment four. And if you have type as, I save it as a PDF. And if you have this Adobe Acrobat installed, uh, it will really assist you. 
So for me, it definitely, it's, after I save it, it's going to open in Adobe Acrobat DC. Whether 32-bit or 64-bit, it really doesn't matter because it's the same software. And then uh, for you to get to that loud, you come to view. And then this check button, when you click on view, you come down here, you see read out loud, and then you come to activate read out loud, okay? So you can come here, the title, you see it's Journal, Journal assignment, assignment 4. I know you are going to experience some echoes, but uh, I'm just going to read one paragraph so that you can see. And highlight some few things so that you see how you can easily highlight also you guys when you are doing your work. So I'll just start here. Journal, Journal assignment, assignment 4. The information in the two videos emphasizes the way our brain works in its overall memory management process. Usually, several processes are involved from the time when information is obtained from our sensory organs. After the information is obtained from our sensory organs, the information is taken to the short-term storage space in our memory, known as the working memory. The information on the working memory is readily available but can be forgotten after a while. To prevent any information loss after learning, one must ensure that the information on the working memory is stored in the long-term memory. The long-term memory is very well organized and is divided into two, implicit and explicit memory. So I see this word very here is rather unnecessary. So I can highlight that one. So just come here, highlight it and come here to the highlighter. Okay. And uh, you see I've highlighted it. So that means I will go back to my document and uh, delete that very. So let's continue. Typically, the memory management processes are organized to relate new information to already existing knowledge easily. One way of achieving this is through schemas that are analogous to computer folders. Through understanding this information, I can use it to become an expert thinker. This is because the information presented in the videos gives a clear understanding of how information is stored in our brains and how to make our memory management system effective. Through the videos, I... Okay, you use Control shift and c to pause, because I've seen like there's a mistake here. Through understanding this information, I can use it to become an expert thinker. This is because the information presented in the videos gives, it should be give, because I'm talking of information, isn't it? and uh, different videos. So there are different pieces of information. So as I like that, I realized that there I'm supposed to have give instead of gives. So I've paused using control, control shift and C and to continue, I think it's control shift and C. Can understand how to improve the process of consolidation and retrieval of memory. Also, the videos give us a way to understand how our brains work, which is vital in thinking. In thinking, our brain needs to relate several things that we know to conclude. So now I've also seen another thing here. In thinking, our brain needs. I can't say our brain because we are not sharing brains, isn't it? Uh, like uh, our brain, it's like we are many people using one brain, okay? So it, it definitely it's supposed to be our brain's need, okay? So I'm going to change this because uh, there's an issue with subject-verb agreement, isn't it? Yeah, so in thinking our brain, because our refers to many people, and then brain is a singular, is a singular item, it cannot be possessed by more than two people, isn't it? So now I'll also highlight that. And if I want to write a comment so that I don't forget, I'll just come and take this comment icon here and uh, write here. And I'll just just write uh, uh, that uh, subject verb agreement. Or I can just write uh, brains need, something of that kind. Uh, brains need. And then I post. So something of that kind. When you just come and over here, you can see brains need, not any other thing that is needed there. So uh, those, are this, those are some of mistakes that uh, people make, and uh, you really have to notice them as uh, when you're proofreading. So we go to the next section. So I'm going to remove this comment and then I'll just come here. Make sure, by the way, to click, you don't use the hand tool to click. The hand tool, this hand tool, is usually important when scrolling this up and down. But for reading, you use this arrow and uh, you just... There are several arrow. behavioral changes that I can make to take advantage of all this information. First, I will have to get enough sleep, which is about eight hours. 
to improve the consolidation process. Also, since our brains need time to consolidate our memory after learning, I will try my best to study or learn new things in advance to give the brain ample time for it. So as you can see here, now this is okay, our brains, isn't it? So our brains is different from uh, from this, our brain. So that is the reason why I'm saying we really have to be careful and uh, be consistent throughout the, the paper. Organization, organization and consolidation. consolidation. Also, I will, I will engage, engage in physical, physical activities, activities that, that will boost my brain's health, health and make my brain, brain learn quickly. quickly. Okay, now, another thing is this inconsistent apostrophe. So here, you can see it's straight, isn't it? You can see right here the apostrophe that here is straight. And uh, the one that is in the cover page, I can come and show you. Uh, this one is the one that is commercial. And that student's name and GT. Okay, so I'll just highlight that. And uh, I know those are the things that I'm supposed to change. So now, um, how do I proceed from here? Because I've realized that... Uh, these things need to be changed. And I have my Word document here. I think, let me just, uh, you can see, yeah, this is my Word document. So I'm just going to, I have some things that I need to change. So what I'm going to do, because this is a demo, let me just show you what I'll do. I'll just create this copy for this one. All right, so yeah, because this, so what I'm going to do, because I want to do these changes very fast, I am going to. Uh, Typically, the memory uh, management processes, processes are organized, organized to relate, to relate new, information new information to already existing. To pause that, I'm going to copy these statements uh, and I'm going to use uh, search. So, like for this one, I want to remove very, so I'm going to use uh, the long. The information in the two videos emphasizes the way our brain works in its overall memory management process. Deactivate the reader cloud now because it's disturbing me. All right, so I want to remove very, and I don't know where it is, so I can just come here and I like these statements until here is. So it will take me exactly to where very is. Then I come to my Word document, journal assignment four, and I come and I use, uh, I come here to file, I come here to uh, find. And uh, when I come to find, I get this bar here, and I just do that, paste it. When I paste it, I know this very is the one that is not supposed to be there, so I'll remove this one. Okay. And then uh, I come to the next one. To the next one is um, the information presented in this video gives. I want, I just want, this is because the information, so I just come here. And I... Uh, Paste the, those words that are just clo close to that word that I want to change. Give and then I save. Make sure anytime you do this, you control S to save your work. And then uh, the next error that I have seen is uh, is here. In thinking, our brain needs. So our, each, our brain. So it should be our brain's need. Huh? So I'll, I can just alight even from here. And just just alight in, in thinking our. So, and then I just come here and I paste it. In, I'm thinking our brains need, so I'll just put our brains. And then here I'll just put a need. And then uh, I'm still seeing, seeing, I'm still seeing the mistakes. Still, now this work had been checked against Grammarly, so I'll check again huh, so that I can... Uh, Okay, this other side is clean. So I've proofread the work. I've made the changes. And because of the changes, I am going to, uh, I am now going to to take this work, to check this work against Grammarly another time before I submit it. So I've already proofread it. I've seen that the ideas are flawless. Uh, but I'm seeing that, uh, so I'm going to open Grammarly and upload. I'm seeing that because I've made some changes, I want to make sure that uh, these changes are not uh, are not problematic, uh, or rather, are not against any grammar rules. So I will upload that work. 
and see my score first how much how many how much they score so this one has a 93 percent score already that's an issue okay so as i said passive voice i may not really worry about it anyway uh is obtained so you can see that the work is very neat but uh the score is too low so if if it is this passive voice that is uh, bringing you to 93 be sure to change some of those passive voices okay so that you have an average of not less than 95 see, it's only passive voice everything here is passive voice so that would that means this is a clear okay i'll just click that one that means presented the, the information this in these videos uh gives i just put that one anything in red in grammarly just avoid it okay so i've seen a value of passive voice so ideally this work uh still cannot be submitted i have to reduce uh that uh, percentage into so i'll download it first and then i'll see what percentage uh the, my work has huh? by if i if i re-upload it again so i'm going to re-upload what i've downloaded so now it's in the downloads it's this one general assignment for edited i just want to see the score for grammarly so it's 93 so that means i have to do something okay because that's a poor score and all this you can be sure it's passive voice and all that so i'm going to change some few passive voice that i can change okay before i submit the work so um, always remember after you're done checking you come to grammarly and then you down, down you 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 delete those uh you delete your work from there and then uh now the last thing now is to check your formatting if it's okay so you check the one that you've uh, obtained from Grammarly. Let me just go back to my directory here and uh, go to uh, downloads. And uh, this is the work that we've obtained. So changes or other updates when it comes to uh, our current uh, rules right now is that uh, right now we are uh, taking, we are using four spaces like here. Here we are using four lines, okay? And le like explained in the previous uh, videos, eh, that in APA, everything's usually left aligned, okay? That's why I'm not leaving these things in the center. So if something is not supposed, it's, it's rather necessary, just bring it back to the left. The left align is the default uh, thing that is required. So initially we are, we were emphasizing on three spaces like this, but now we are emphasizing on four. But that's rather a small update. And then uh, you'll realize that right now, you, the samples that are given, this place is no longer a student's name. Right now, it's going to be an author's name. Okay? And uh, this is because we don't want this information to be kind of sensitive. We want it to be somewhat neutral. Okay? Yeah, because other people are, might, might not be students and they're seeking our services. So we realized uh it's better to go with something like author something of that kind and then uh, when you scroll down yeah this basically it's okay other okay no sources are required here but but uh generally you just have to add sources in almost everything because this information that is here wasn't guessed after all so this person here was supposed to have a, a references page down there so I am going to show you those updates and I'm going to have a video. Uh, this time around, we are going to have a video showing you how APA 7, uh, APMLA, how, how we want our work to be so that you guys can always have a point of reference. So, yeah. So, if you want to proofread it again, you can. But uh, for me, once I proofread it once and I've realized it's okay and uh, everything is just okay with the paper, I I go and uh, submit it. So the next video I'm going to show you how to set uh, these standards things to as your default for your Word document. Okay, like uh, you set Times New Romans as the default font. You set uh, second line spacing as your default line, paragraphs, whatever, everything. Uh, this one will easily av avoid. Uh, will easily prevent you from uh, making mistakes so 
be sure to watch the next video and uh, that will be all for this video of paraphrasing and work and ensuring that you have good good work so for now you really can't come and complain that you really can't paraf you can't proofread your work or what no you don't do that right now do what is expected of you and your work will be good and your work is going to be appreciated and everything is going to be okay so you have a nice time and uh uh yes have a nice time